Now, last evening, did I remind you about a few things that you may have forgotten since the last workshop you attended? And did you start to see that future possibilities cannot exist when you're connected to past emotions? Did you understand that? And if you understand that the cycle of thinking and feeling that we create on a daily basis, either from our own auto-suggestions or from our responses to the external world, as we begin to process information from the life that's so familiar to us, the known people and the places that we can predict and the things that we can do, if we wake up in the morning and we allow the environment, our external reality, to control our very thoughts and feelings, then as we think and feel equal to the environment, we're creating more of the same. And it only takes a few days of going unconscious in that way, and like an automatic program, we return back to the old self. So to change then is to think greater than your environment, to think greater than the conditions in your life. And that process means that you literally can change your brain and your body to look like the experience has happened ahead of the actual experience. And when your brain and body are changed because you wake up in the morning and you remember a future that exists as a potential in the quantum field, and you radiate a new electromagnetic signature that matches this signature, well, now you're on a whole new timeline. And you're literally enacting the quantum reality. And it doesn't have to be complicated. It could be as simple as deciding to no longer be afraid, to surrender that and just give it up and go on in spite of it. And as you do that, then you make a different choice, and that different choice literally leads you to a potential that's always existed just by you making a different choice in your future. How many people understand that? So then if you keep thinking the same thoughts and you keep performing the same actions and you keep romancing the same emotions and expecting something different to happen in your life, you are not living by the quantum law. You're living by the old paradigm of religion that was created by a bunch of insecure men that were trying to control people. That's not the quantum model. So when you begin to just decide to think differently, to experiment by keeping your energy up the entire day and not letting those limited emotions make their way back into the subconscious that begins to drive you. You're Gandalf on the bridge saying, you may not pass today. You are in control, and it's that process of weeding out our limitations and beginning to break down those habituations that we really think that is part of who we are. When we begin to make those changes within us, and energy begins to break out of our seams because we're no longer contracted in that pattern, that simple change is the available energy that is now in your field, and you use that energy to literally construct a new destiny because particles are alive and they respond to your observation. So if you're waking up in the morning then, and you're predicting what your day is going to be like, and you begin to think about all the people you're going to see and all the things you're going to do and all the, all the things that you already know in the predictable life that you live, you're living this familiar future. Would you agree? You're living equal to your environment and your past self is creating your present self and it's creating your future self. How many people understand that? Would you also understand that, that every time you, you go back and you revisit an emotion, you're back into your past? Emotions are a memory of the past, yes? And then if you romance that and you think and feel in that realm and that cycle of thinking and feeling creates an electromagnetic field that you're broadcasting, now you're literally creating this future. And then if you're in this future, then here you go again, romancing this past. And what do we keep doing? We're on a very specific line of time that is projecting you to your genetic destiny. 
And then you could say, I am this way because of this experience that's happened to me back here. And I memorized the emotion because I didn't know that every time I thought about that experience, I was producing the same chemistry in my brain and my body as if the experience was happening. And my body as the unconscious mind didn't know the difference between the actual event or the emotion that I was fabricating because emotions are the language of the body. Thoughts are the language of the brain. So then, if you believe that then, then you would say, when a person says, I am this way because of this experience that's happened to me 20 years ago, what they're really saying is, I've memorized this emotion and I don't know how to change. And the only way that I can explain how I am is I could only relate it back to this past event. How many people are still with me? So it goes something like a thought that's connected to a memory that, that produces an emotion. And then the thought of the memory becomes the emotion, and then we just memorize the emotion. And we live that way. And it's that fracturing of the personality that begins to cause us to disseminate our power in our life, to begin to integrate self again by making choices to be differently, to break the habit of the old self, and literally begin to contemplate and speculate possibilities for you as you're beginning to think about a new possibility in your life, the moment you begin to think about it, you're forcing your brain to fire in new sequences and new patterns and new combinations. And that very process of contemplation, of speculation, of invention, is the building process of the circuitry in your brain, which becomes the platform of who you're going to become. You're sending a signal out in that process of possibility. And as you begin to think about possibility, you're literally drawing your conscious awareness to one of these potentials that only exist in the now moment. They can't exist in the future because as you begin to think about all the things you're going to do in your day, your body is already in the future. But it's in the future, familiar future, that you already know. And that known future creates more of the same. How many people are still with me? So then, by the same means then, a person who's embracing a past event, over time they forget the event and they just live by that emotion and then they define themselves as guilty or insecure or afraid or having anxiety or whatever it is for the person. So then, how much of our life do we really live in the present moment? And only in the present moment do you make contact with all these potentials. So if you were to decide then, as you begin to speculate possibilities in your life and you're making a new mind, if you could just surrender the smallest bit to how it would feel from an emotional standpoint, let go and play. Unclutter your energy enough to begin to be like a child and begin to feel what that event would feel like. We're going to do that today because we're going to signal your body over and over again to recondition it to believe that it's in the event so that when you get up and memorize that state, you have available energy that you're drawing to you. So then if you were able to play like that enough and, and you understand that feelings and emotions are the end product of experience, then you could literally teach your body or instruct it to be ahead of the experience just by you deciding that you don't need a reason in your external world to feel joy, to feel gratitude, to feel possibility, to feel inspired. And then some people would say, well, you know, I, I really can't do that. You know, I, I can't feel. And I would say to them, the only reason you can't feel is because you're too memorized into an emotion that's defined you as an identity, as a somebody. The process of creation requires you becoming a nobody. Because the moment you forget about you, there's a physiological change that takes place in the brain. Where finally the hindbrain, with all of its survival stressful emotions, is turned off and the forebrain is looking at all those possibilities and potentials because the emotions that are created from the forebrain are joy and you begin to see a new landscape a new horizon. 
Can't do it from the old self, though, because the old self is connected to those old emotions. So if you understand even the smallest bit about this, then you would say, then, the only person that I'm actually affecting by living by these emotions is me. The judgment that I have and the emotions or the hatred that I live by or the, the guilt or the fear, those emotions are signaling the same gene in the same way. And my body thinks it's in a very, very stressful situation in my life. And it could be fine, but your body becomes conditioned so well that it memorizes it better than the conscious mind. Now we're in trouble because then the only solution for that is to take medication to sedate the body or stimulate the body. The only solution is to go shopping and spend a lot of money so the feeling goes away, or to gamble, or to get on a computer and play games just so that you don't have to feel. But if you pay attention to that feeling and you realize that you've trained your body, the animal, to anticipate so much in the future that it's racing to it, or you begin to realize that you've reviewed your life so many times in analysis, that you produce the same emotions that create hopelessness and powerlessness for the body. That's what, our, that's what our life has become. So we have to find something outside of us to make those feelings go away. At the end of our life, we realize then that, 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 that none of that meant anything. When you sit down and you say, there's got to be something else, and all of the resources that are available are right within me. Because there's a part of us that knows better all the time. Do you know what I mean? We know better all the time. And we, that voice gets softer and softer as we get older because we become more distracted by the external world. And we start to rationalize with that, with that conscience that says, you better change, you, know, you better take care of this, and then you go on in spite of it, or we go on in spite of it. And so what happens? There's disease, there's loss, there's breakdown in your life, and then when you reach the point where the personality, the identity is so beaten down by its external world that you can't go on business as usual. And that's when people have the catharsis of personal change. They reach their lowest denominator, and then they say, I can't fake it any longer. I can't live like this any longer. I gotta I got do something. And so if we live by these limited emotions that push the genetic buttons that create disease, and you understand that just even from a theoretical standpoint, would you like to wait for your life heads for that genetic potential? Or can you choose yourself every morning, like a work in progress, like a work of art, to experiment with life and raise your energy and maintain it? independent of the environment. And if you're so bold enough to do that, to maintain it, something should show up differently in your world. That's the law. And it should come in a way that blows your doors off, that leaves you surprised. I forgot I was in Canada. Jeez. <laughs> I was in New York, what was it, two weeks ago? I was in New York two weeks ago, and the audience, and I, I start talking two minutes, and someone's like, hey, blah, blah. I start answering the lady's question, and I start talking. And the lady, ah, blah. finally I said, oh, God, I'm in New York. I forgot. Shut up. Okay, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so when you begin to live by that laxity and by that freedom, and you begin, listen, think about this. Where's my person? You. When you live in a state of trust, that you believe in a future that you can't see or experience with your senses, but it's alive in your mind and body, and you have the chills running up your spine because you're excited, but you don't know how it's going to happen or why, but you're living in that state. When you believe in that future that you can't see or experience yet, but you've conditioned yourself to be in, you literally are trusting in an outcome, would you agree? And as you begin to trust in an outcome, and you knew, listen, if you knew your life was going to be handled, would you allow yourself 
to be caught up in the insignificant emotions and details that so many people become distracted by so that it stops their growth, it stops their movement in their life because they bump up against something that causes this big emotional reaction and then the, for the rest of the day, they're living in the, the, the mood of that experience. And it's that mood then that keeps the events in their life at arm's distance the whole entire time. How many people are with me?